Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Now this video will be a uh, GPU power uh, efficiency optimization guide. So um, what we're going to do today is we're going to take my 390 which is a video card notorious for its uh, high power usage and we're going to try and uh, make it as effective as possible, power efficient as possible. The way we're going to measure this is using the Tech Power Up GPU C tool because that measures power in. Uh, so we're, we're going to be looking at this figure to, to determine how much power it's using. And um, when we're done with the uh, optimizations, how much power we've uh, saved. So uh, the first, worrying, if first thing we're going to do is that we're going to stress the system just to see how much power the graphics card uses in, in um, you know, vanilla settings, at base settings. So we're running at 1050 megahertz, which is the basis for the 390, uh, the, the uh, Asus Strix version, which I'm using. Uh, I think the base for the normal uh, 390 is the... Um, is one gigahertz. So this is comes with stock with uh, uh, a 50 megahertz overclock or a 5% overclock. So um, with that in mind, let's just start. So let's have this load up and let's see how much power it uses. It's already up in the 100 watts. I think we will reach about 220 with uh, the settings. Oh. Holy! So we peaked just there at 288, which is uh, a ton. And it seems like we're fluctuating now between... Um, yeah, no, we're getting, we're getting back up there. Uh, and how's the temperatures looking? Already up in the 70s. We're gonna hear the fans kicking in very soon. Um, let's just let this run for like a few seconds and, and see where it kind of even saw fat. So it seems it's still climbing. So um, yeah, this card is very power hungry uh, when it's uh, when it's not tampered with, which we are going to do a lot of. So I think actually this card starts to thermal throttle at 80 degrees or 82 degrees. So I think at these settings, we're actually going to see some thermal throttling. Yeah, there. It had a little a little dip down to the 1049 range. And there, 1048. Let's see if it dips even further. Yeah, it's 1024. So uh so it's dipping and it reached it reached over 300 watts. Uh just for reference, the power supply that I'm using with this computer is 500 watts. So if this were to uh, continue climbing, uh, we'd have a real problem. So the first thing we're going to do is something that's quite obvious, I think, to everyone who's ever done uh, any optimization, and that is to undervolt. Uh, for those of you who don't know who, uh, what undervolting is, it's basically um, forcing the processor, in this case the graphics processor, to use less power. And that's basically what it is. It doesn't affect performance. Uh, it does affect stability. Uh, so you will reach a point when you've undervolted too much that the graphics processor will be unstable. Uh, now we're going to want to avoid that. Uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to go into MSI Afterburner. This works for most GPUs. Go into settings. Uh, we're going to go down to... Uh, unlock voltage control and voltage monitoring and that's going to be fine and it's going to ask us to restart the uh, MSI afterburner now sometimes this restarts the whole computer so I'm just going to uh, temporarily end the recording here and we'll be back when I've unlocked the voltage monitoring and we're back it didn't uh, seem like it restarted my computer this time so so that's great so I, I'm actually kind of unsure on how far this card can undervolt, so we're just going to go with um, minus 50 to start with. Uh, and that's a minus 50 in millivolts. 
Uh, the most that MSI Afterburner can undervolt or overvolt is 100 millivolts, which is, in my opinion, too little. Um, but hey, I, I'm, I'm not the one calling the shots. So let's see if it's stable and if we're uh, going to get some improvements on our uh, power measurements uh, with this minus 50 millivolts uh, active. So let's start the stress test. Let's wait for it to load up here. And it is, uh, it is improving. It didn't spike up to 288 as it did last time. It's staying in the low-ish 200 watts area. So yeah, I think this is a definite improvement. At least it seems like it. And the temperatures doesn't seem to rise as quickly. So we're just gonna let this run for for uh, for a couple of seconds more, see where it ends up, uh, and see if we can't push it any further. If you're hearing any birds chirping, that's because I have my my window open, and I'm uh, too lazy and comfortable in my chair to get up and close it. So yeah, this is a definite improvement. It stays below 250 watts uh, and even dips below 200 watts um, regularly, and that's uh, that's good enough for me. It seems to kind of have stabled off at 78 degrees, so we're not reaching any thermal throttling point. So not only have we, oh, 79, there we go. So not only have we reduced the power consumption, but we have also, uh, at least as, it, um, as much as we can see right now, we have mitigated uh, thermal throttling, which means we have also increased performance, which is great. So um, we can continue undervolting and getting better and better results and just watching out for any instabilities. Uh, you'll know that the uh, settings are unstable if you see the image flicker, just if we want to do that. Uh, we're not going to do any more of uh, voltage tuning because there is one more factor that determines whether or not a uh, graphics card uses more or less power, and that is temperature. Uh, believe it or not, uh, the hotter a processor gets, the more power that processor will use, making it even hotter, uh, which is um, fantastic. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to get out of this, and we're going to set up a custom fan curve. Uh, or actually, we're going to set a permanent uh, kind of fan percentage. Um, so let me just see here if we have a, no, we don't have a fan measuring. I, I should have set that up. Um, but we're going to set the fan to a, a constant percentage that is not too loud for our ears. Um, and what that's hopefully going to do is that it's going to reduce the temperatures overall, which again is going to reduce the, the power consumption. So let's turn off auto and let's turn this up to, let's say 38%, apply. And I can't really hear that. So we're gonna go higher to 42. Oh, I definitely can hear that. So uh, back to 39, perhaps that's a better. Yeah, 39, that's the, that's the sweet spot. All right, so now we have a undervolt and a custom fan curve. That's hopefully gonna help with the temperatures. So let's start the stress test again and let's see if we get any better results. So immediately, it's kind of hard to tell any difference. Uh, but as you can see, it's um, it's more often under 200 wa uh, watts. Uh, but let's uh, let the GPU warm up a bit more and let's see how it is then. 
Uh, to note, uh, this is something I won't do because I've already done it, uh, but if you want it even better cooling, what you can do is to repaste your graphics card. Now what that entails is that you unscrew the cooler on the graphics card and you uh, wipe off the old thermal compound and you spray on some new thermal compound, whether that is thermal paste uh, or even better liquid metal. Uh, that's entirely up to you, um, but that's also a way to improve cooling significantly. Um, so yeah, we seem to have improved the wattage uh, just a tiny fraction more than it was with uh, just the undervolt. But if we combine the undervolt and the fan curve, we can see that we've dropped on average what seems like about 80 watts uh, on average. Uh, from the high 200s uh, and peaking up to the 300s uh, that we have before to uh, fluctuating between 180 and 250 it seems to regularly go up to. So that's an overall improvement. Alright, so that's going to be it for this video and I have hoped you enjoyed it. If you did, uh, leave a like. Uh, if you hate it and hate me, then uh, I guess dislike. And I see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Uh,